viewers all over the world, heavenly greetings in Christ Jesus. Welcome to another lesson here on the Foundation Series, Step into the Spiritual, where today we shall talk about the breaking down of the difference between belief and faith. Throughout our journey, we've received so many questions from people about belief and faith. And the major question is, what is the difference between belief and faith? So we want to address the answer to that question right now on this lesson here on the University of God. So the question is, what is the difference between belief and faith? Right. Thank you so much. So let me take you back one example. <laughs> Our father, the Lord Prophet, Bishop, used to use very often when he teaches, he said, when a farmer plants a seed in the ground, he will not dig it out to see whether it's growing or not. Mm. He just believes it is growing. Take note, believe. So when the word is planted in my heart, by revelation here, the transformation starts, right? When revelation comes and I understand the divine meaning of the Bible, as was the case of Lydia in Acts chapter 16, verse 14, when God opened her heart to understand what Paul was saying, immediately conviction her, yes, it is true. When understanding comes, you say, yes, it is true for me. And that form what we call conviction. Let everyone be convinced in his own heart. Romans chapter 14, verse 5. That's the first stage of faith we call belief. That belief is underground, is in the heart. That's the root. So the farmer will believe that something is growing inside the ground before it begins to have a branch on the outside. So belief always happens in the heart. It has to do with your spirit. With our heart, with our spirit, we believe. So when the word comes, illumined by the spirit of God, understand it come, then we are convinced that it is true for me. That is belief. An opinion for belief is an opinion formed with your heart. That is conviction. That's what you call root of faith. You call it inner reality. There is something growing inside, we're going to see. So if the farmer doubts whether the seed is growing, he will dig it out, he will kill it. Mm. But there's inner reality, it means it's growing inside the ground. He trusts that the root is there. Absolutely. Like an embryo in the mother's womb, there's an inner reality. At the day of the birth, it comes out. That's faith. Belief is inside, faith is expressed outside. So if I have a mere belief, I believe Jesus is the Lord. But if I don't manifest it on the outside, nobody will know. Hmm. If there's water underground, now you have to put a pipe with the pressure, open the tap, and the water comes out. And that's faith. Faith releases the belief on the inside. So belief is a conviction, while faith is a demonstration, right? Belief, therefore, demand an action mm. on the outside. So conviction of belief leads to a hard decision first. What is a hard decision? Yes, Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus is Lord. The hard decision, mm. I'm going to accept Jesus. Conviction triggers inner decision of heart, a hard decision. That's when my spirit will decide to act on it. I will obey it. I will put it into faith in a practical way. So that conviction will trigger an inner decision when my spirit begins to act on that revelation. And this is a third stage of faith called real movement. I mean, faith grows on the outside or an action born of faith. That's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, I believe in my heart, therefore I confess Jesus is Lord. Belief must take First, in your heart, before you confess. Mean, I can say something in my mind without belief. There is no root. Mm. That's the parable of the soul. When the word enters my heart, and the Spirit of God gives me understanding, and real conviction come, a heart decision, yes, this is true, and then I can confess it by faith on the outside. So, there is power in my mouth, the belief in my heart, is released, released by, by faith, faith out of my mouth. Jesus is Lord. The root of the tree is belief, and uh, the tree is faith. And you know, such was the case of the woman with the issue of blood mm. in the Bible, mm -hmm. in the book of Mark 5, verse 25 to 34. Oh, yes. So Excellent. Let's take a moment Thank to you. watch.
Who touch my clothes? Master, I've been bleeding for 12 years. I have gone to all the doctors in the land. I have spent all what I have, and yet it only got worse. But if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Only when I touched the hem of your garment, my bleeding stopped instantly. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. The woman of the issue of blood, as we said, she first heard about Jesus and conviction came. That conviction led to her in a decision. And she said, if I go there and touch this man, I will be healed. Mm. She was convinced. And what she did next? Real movement. She stepped out of her house. She saw the crowd. She elbowed her way through. And what she said is what she did. See, if I touch the hem of his garment, she reached out and touched the hem of Jesus and power flowed from Jesus and she was healed. So she heard conviction, heart decision, real movement. She touched the hem and power came. And that's the process. So like Nicodemus, the woman of the issue of blood first heard about the miracle Jesus was performing among the people. That quickened her. Her mind was refreshed. Her mind was renewed. And hope came that there's a solution to a problem for 12 years. Immediately, she was convinced in her heart. Next, a heart decision came. Her conviction gave birth to a heart decision. She said, I will go. If I touch him, I will be healed. And she actually went and really got to place. Exactly. She believed, and that's why she said in the book of Mark 5, 28, if I may touch his clothes, the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. I'll be made whole. Yes. Now we see clearly the difference here between belief and faith. Mm. Belief as a conviction is dormant. Yes. Belief is a substance and faith is the evidence. Mm -hmm. Faith is a demonstration. Belief demands action. It creates action. That is why conviction brings real movement. Right. After she confessed what she believed about Jesus, she stepped into faith and moved towards Jesus. That is, she walked in the footprints of her confession and elbowed her way through the crowd 
a move towards Jesus. Yes. The Bible says the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the, the evidence, evidence of things. things. Yes. Not First, seen. hope she had. Substance, belief was form, evidence, she acted faith and medical took place. So our profession, our confession of faith, if it is not followed by appropriate actions, is a lifeless form of word without any inner reality. She says substance, belief is dormant. If you don't put it into faith, it is dormant. Mm. There is water. Unless you open the tap, it is dormant. So belief, demand, and action on the outside to act faith. Even though the water is there, if you don't open Absolutely. the tap, you won't see the water. That's because the difference between inner reality mm. and evidence on the outside, which is faith, is evidence. The substance turns to evidence when you act faith and becomes a reality in the visible world. Hope becomes substance at the point of belief. The root is there. Faith releases that substance, that belief on the outside by confessing active faith, and it becomes an evidence, a visible reality in the visible world. Immediately she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, God's power came onto the scene over her and crowned her faith, and the flow of blood stopped immediately. This is what Prophet Jesus said, there is power in my mouth, the belief, the belief in my heart, in my spirit, is released belief. by faith out mm -hmm. of my mouth, by confession of faith. This means faith confession. Belief in the heart must be the foundation. Belief is the foundation. Faith stands on that belief. So faith is greater than belief. Because without faith, belief is dormant. Mm -hmm. It is faith that put belief into action. Without faith, belief is lifeless. This is what the Bible means by Belief without the work of faith is dormant, lifeless, hmm. is dead. Faith that works. It's true. You see, there were many who heard about Jesus, but because of fear of persecution, of embarrassment, they did not acknowledge Jesus publicly and their belief remained dormant. Think of it like this. Belief, let's say belief is a person. Belief can see a fruit and be convinced that it's good, but never take it. But faith reaches out and takes it. That's the difference. Yes. Belief is abstract. Faith is practical. This is the difference between the hearer of the word, who is merely convinced, and the doer of the word, who act faith. Mm -hmm. So the reward of true faith is for the doer of the word. When the belief or inner conviction is released or manifested on the outside by an act of faith, dynamic faith. It is when we act on the word, by obeying it, that the Holy Spirit will come onto the scene to renew our strength by filling our spirit with his life and strength. As Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 says, and when the Holy Ghost come, he will back up our words or deeds with power from on high. And miracles, healing, deliverance, breakthrough take place. And you can live the life of an overcomer. Remember the Holy Spirit comes into our life to make us overcomers, to be able to live each day as an overcomer. Mm -hmm. This is dynamic faith or divine faith when our spirit acts upon the word under the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill the word. Yeah. When the word becomes spirit and life, it will by its very nature change you by renewing your mind. And when it does, you'll find yourself moved to act. You'll find yourself moved by the very life of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's what the man of God prophet Jesus said. If you take God's word to heart and truly made it a part of you by meditation, it will by its very nature, spirit change and life, you. change you. Mm -hmm. Conviction, revelation, change you. And when it does, you find yourself moved by the very life of God, the strength of the Holy Ghost, and act with God through the word and by his spirit. So real movement comes when someone is moved by the very life of the Holy Ghost, when his strength is renewed, and when you move, power moves. When you talk, power talks. When the woman of the issue of blood moved towards Jesus and by faith touched the hem of Jesus' garment, power came, flowed through her, and touched her life, and she was healed. So when real movement comes, whatever you say, or do or touch will be affected by the Holy Spirit 
and life will be manifested by the power of God. When you speak, you speak words of life. So moved by the Holy Ghost, holy men prophesied, as the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, they were moved by the Holy Ghost while they were declaring the message of prophecy. At Pentecost, the disciples spoke new tongues when the Holy Ghost came upon them in Acts chapter 2, verse 3. Yes. That's it. Words become God's word when they're affected by the Holy Spirit and become spirit and life. Yes. The Bible says that God sent forth his word and they were healed. Mm -hmm. Psalm 107 verse 20. If the Holy Spirit prompts you to say, be healed, and you speak it out, life will be manifested. Yes. And the sick will be healed. That is it. Such were the case of Peter when he spoke to the paralytic at the beautiful gate. Silver and gold I do not have. Mm. What I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And the lame began to walk. Peter's testimony was no longer in word only, but words and life mm. when the Holy Ghost came upon him because his words were affected by the Holy Spirit. Words become God's word when they are affected by the Holy Ghost. That's the key. So right now in your daily life, in your situation, when you speak God's word over a person or a situation, you've released your faith and brought God's power on the scene. And when God's power comes on the scene, salvation and all of its blessings come. Mm -hmm. So as we draw this lesson to a close, let us ask the question, what is divine faith? Yes. Divine faith is the force that has God's backing behind it for its fulfillment. By divine faith, man hears God's voice in his heart, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. That inner voice will be called the inwardly received truth of word of revelation in his heart. So when the word enters man's spirit, the word of revelation received in his heart through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. When man's spirit acts upon that word, God's power comes onto the scene. That's the spirit of faith. As it says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, I believe, therefore I speak. With the same spirit of faith, we also believe and confess. The Bible says that God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Yes, that's what the Bible says in Luke 20, verse 38. Let's read. Luke 20, verse 38. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. So what does it mean? Jesus Christ is not the Lord of the dead, but the Lord of the living. Because he says, my sheep hear my voice. Hmm. He said in John 8 verse 47, and John 10, my sheep hear my voice. Are yes. you hearing the voice of God? Is your spirit dead or alive? Hmm. Hmm. This simply means we live in the spirit when we live in harmony with the word of God. We walk in the spirit when you walk in harmony with the word of God. Which word of God? That word of God is spirit and life. We call the inwardly received truth in our heart. So God speaks to our heart, not to our ears. So let the Bible become alive in your heart, in you, in Christ Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Believers all over the world today, we want to explain with the help of the Holy Spirit, the foundation of faith. Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 6 to 8, 9, that the word is near you, in my heart and in my mouth. This means that faith is in two places. First, in my heart, which only God can see, and then in my mouth. I mean, faith deals with two reality. First, in my heart, where God dwells, that is unseen realm. What is in the heart, only God can see. I cannot see God, God is invisible. So when you hear about belief, belief has to do with the heart. You believe what you cannot see. You believe what is invisible. 
I believe in God, God is invisible. I believe in his word, the word in my heart remains invisible until I confess it. If I say I am a Christian believing in Christ Jesus, I'm the only person who said it because it is my personal conviction and belief in my heart. How do you know I'm a Christian? I'm a Christian when I release that belief on the outside. When I confess to you with my mouth that I am a Christian, then you act on what I confess. Right. So, when we talk about faith, we should understand faith is just like a tree. That's why we always use the example of the farmer. Because the word of God is likened to a seed which God plants in our heart. The parable of the sower. So when a preacher is speaking or when we are hearing the word of God, that word is called the seed of divine life, which comes in the right ground of the human spirit, human heart. And there it produces a special root, which we call belief in my heart. It's only the root that is in my heart we call belief. You can't see yet the tree. It is when the belief in my heart grows deep, has root, that that belief can be expressed by faith on the outside, by my confession in the visible world. And then faith is complete. So when you look at this tree, this is a tree. This tree has two parts, a visible part. I can see the trunk, you can see the branches, you see the leaves, it is visible. This is the tree. This one, you can see the tree and the flowers, the fruits on the outside. This is the visible part of the tree. But this tree, the heart of this tree, you cannot see it. It is in the ground, the root. What sustains this tree is the root, and the root, we can't see them. The roots are real. This means just because you cannot see something on the outside doesn't mean it does not exist. The root inside the tree gave birth to the whole tree and sustained the tree. It stands on the root. That root is what we call belief. So belief is the root of faith, while the tree is absolute the evidence. So I'm trying to demonstrate something. Look at this one. This is the far I'm a farmer. I plant the parable of the sower. What I hold is a seed. You can see it's a seed. But this seed is powerless, lifeless, until it is planted in the right ground. So when the farmer is planting a seed, he has hope that this seed will yield a harvest one day. So he believed in the process of nature that this seed, once planted inside the ground, will first produce roots that go deep inside, and those roots will nourish and sustain the plant outside, which will bear later the fruit of the harvest. But first, it starts by what? Planting the seed. So what does the farmer do? First, he will dig the ground, as I'm doing. I dig it. You can see. Now the seed is planted inside the ground. And this, then I cover the ground. I close the ground and cover it. Put the soil. <laughs> and then, what is my duty? Is to water the seed. When I water the seed here, the rest is not my job, it's God's work. That's what Paul said. I plant, Apollo watered, and God made the increase. Once I play my role, which is to plant the seed on the ground, then I believe in the process of nature, that the seed will bear root one day without me seeing it. That the seed will grow in the ground and have root without me seeing it. And one day, I will see something spring up on the surface like this one. And then it becomes visible. So now, what is inside the ground is what we call belief. The root inside the ground, I cannot see it, but I believe it is growing. 
and one day I will see it on the outside. So these are the two realities of faith. Inside the ground, inner reality. Inner reality means invisible reality. It is real, but I cannot see it. God can see it. What is in your, your heart is real. We call it inner reality. Invisible, but true. Jesus has risen from the dead. That's inner reality. He's in heaven. He's in a reality. It's only in the spirit you see Jesus. That means not just because you cannot see something, that does not mean it doesn't exist. It exists. It is in a reality. When a woman is pregnant, at the early stages, you have an embryo. You can't see the embryo unless by scan, vision revelation. But when the child is born on the outside, it's a demonstration evidence. So there are two realities in everything. Invisible part and visible part. In the invisible part, it takes belief to know it. It takes belief to believe it. And faith express it on the outside to become visible. So, now, if I dig, if I'm the farmer, we we'll never do this. Let me see whether this plant is growing. So, I'm going to dig it out. You see? I dig it out. It is growing on the ground. What have I done? I have killed it. Because of my doubt, I remove it and I uproot it. And this is the life of the tree. A farmer will never do that. He believes absolutely that this is growing inside before he sees the evidence on the outside. So if a farmer can have an absolute trust in the process of nature, why can't we believe in the process of God when the word in our heart brings faith on the inside? So, I repeat again. You have belief. What is hidden calls for belief, conviction. I believe there's water on the inside. I believe there is seed on the inside before I see it happen. So when the farmer plant, he expects the time of harvest. He will come and check. Hey, I plant my seed here. Is it growing? In the same place you plant your seed, in the same place you expect the plant to come out. That's the evidence of faith. So, Hebrews say, faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. This is seed. What is substance? When the seed begins to grow on the inside, have root, that is substance. Substance means there is inner reality. It is growing inside, but I cannot see it. Now, if I act on that substance of faith, it becomes evidence of things not seen. Mean the seed, the, the plant seed in the inside, the root on the inside becomes visible on the outside by faith. So if I see a sick person, I want to pray to the person. First, I believe in my heart that Jesus is alive, is able to heal that person. And I receive instruction in my spirit, a seed in my heart, a revelation in my heart to pray for the person. If I act on that revelation in my heart, that is belief. I say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I see the evidence, the healing, the breakthrough on the outside. These are the fruit of faith. So, faith releases the belief inside the heart to reality on the outside. Faith brings the inner reality, the promise, on reality in the outside. What I believe in my heart, what is hidden, will become a visible reality on the outside. That's the fruit. That's the power of faith. Healing takes place. Deliverance. Breakthrough. Answered prayer. So if I pray, I must believe that God hears me in a reality, that God has answered me. I know His will. It is done. I believe. And then when the right time comes, reality will come. God took Abraham in Genesis 15 verse 6. Look at the stars. Such will be your descendant. Abraham believed what God said in his heart without seeing the, 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 the proceed. He believes without seeing. And then it became reality when the time of harvest come. So now, once I plant the seed, what do I do? Water. We need water. Let's look for water. I see a tap. And this is 
the same demonstration between belief and faith. I believe there is water. That's why I have to press the tap to see the, the water come out. Right? There is water here. That water is hidden in the ground. We call it inner reality. Faith, we don't look by sight. But I believe there's water inside the ground. Because I believe there's water, I act faith on the outside to see the water. This is what we say, there is power in your mouth. The belief in your heart is released by faith out of your mouth. This means the conviction in my heart, the belief in my heart, the inner reality of the promise, reality of it, inner reality. If I act faith on the outside, faith will release the substance on the outside. And the evidence of things not seen. The substance inside the ground, the water inside the ground, that inner reality, invisible reality, becomes visible when I express faith on the outside by pressing the button and the water comes out. So, belief in something hidden, I cannot see. You must believe first before you express on the outside and see. I believe there's water. I express faith and the water comes out. So you can see, belief is dormant as the water is dormant. But faith is a demonstration, dynamic faith. I demonstrate and the water comes out. It becomes a reality. So belief is a conviction. Faith is a demonstration. I know there is water. I demonstrate the water comes out. Show me your faith. That is it. So a Christian must not only know his faith in his heart, but must demonstrate his faith and it become a visible reality. So, what you believe in your heart, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus has risen from the dead. That Jesus is right now sitting at the right hand of God. I believe in the hidden promise of the Bible. I believe in my heart. And I act faith by confessing it, reality come. That's what the Bible says. When you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you confess with the mouth, come, salvation become a reality. Holy Spirit become a reality. Faith become a reality. So, we should not forget that faith is a tree. First, it starts by the root. The root is what we call belief. Belief is a part of faith that is hidden. While faith is a demonstration on the outside. Action. But you must have belief first, before. That's why the Bible calls it dynamic faith in the second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. I believe, therefore I speak. I believe there's water on the inside. Therefore I open the tap and the water comes out. I believe Jesus has risen from the dead. I confess it, I'm saved. It starts first by in conviction there's a reality I cannot see in a reality. That's what we call substance inside. And now by acting faith, we release a substance on the outside, we see healing miracle takes place. So, the part of belief is between your heart and God. But when you are in the midst of a situation, you release that belief by faith. So faith is greater than belief. So you, because you can believe, but without expressing by faith, that belief is dormant. If you are a Christian and you are silent, your faith is silent and your God is silent and there is no evidence. But if you express it by faith, we see the evidence on the outside. So, in summary, with our heart, with our spirit, we believe the hidden truth. With faith, we express the truth on the outside and we see the power, the evidence, healing, breakthrough, salvation, are the expression of the belief in the heart. Thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. So believe in your heart and act faith. That's why we said the definition of the book of Hebrew, faith is the substance of things hopeful. It first started by the mere hope. But when revelation comes, revelation, you receive vision or you hear God speak to you, it's no longer hope, it's living hope. It becomes substance because you have heard from God. And that substance in your heart will produce what we call conviction. That's the root. Belief. Opinion formed with the heart. I believe it is true. And then I confess it and reality comes. May God bless your soul in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So we believe this lesson today about the difference between faith and belief has really blessed your spirit because now you know that you have the root of the tree deeply inside you. Yes, that's belief, but you need to act on that belief. You need to activate your faith and then you'll bring God's power on the scene. When you release your faith, you bring God's power on the scene and God's power comes onto the scene of your life. So right now, remember, the word of God is speaking to you right now. One word may speak today, another tomorrow, but God has sent each word straight into your life. So remember to meditate on the words in today's lesson, read the Bible passages, go over them again and again in your heart and begin to understand the difference between belief and faith and how it affects you as a believer in your daily walk with God. Remember, God is not the God of the dead, but the living. So feed your heart, your soul with the word of God. Uh, when you take God's word into your heart for meditation and make it a part of you, that word, spirit of life, will change you and you'll be moved by the very life of God. When you pray, God will hear an answer. In Jesus' name. Thank you.